The day that I'm writing the script is Monday, July 25th, but just where did we get our days or months or anything from? Well today we're going to take a look at a brief history of the calendar. Primitive cultures only had two measurements of time available. Days which were measured from one night until the next night, and then there were months which you can measure from one moon phase until you saw that moon phase again, usually a new moon hence the name. These were called lunar calendars and they came with a problem. They give us a month that is approximately 29.5 days long. 12 months of this and you get a year that is approximately 354 days long. Meaning that every year your months drift 11 days off from the solar year. And eventually you end up with December in the summer. Looking at you Australia. In Egypt they measured their solar year to be 365 days long using the position of stars and adjusted their calendars accordingly. This made their calendar much more accurate than early calendars, but they still noticed the calendar would be off by one day every four years. Meaning that every 1,460 years, their months would have completely went through the year and be back where they're supposed to be. This was until Julius Caesar came around. At the time, Rome was using a lunar calendar that would occasionally add months to keep the seasons in check with the solar year. But an astronomer informed Julius Caesar that their months were three months out from the solar year, and that the solar year is actually 365 days, six hours long. So Julius Caesar added 90 days to the calendar to bring those months back into a Alignment, and then introduced a leap year every four years to keep up with the extra six hours. This became known as the Julian calendar and was used widely throughout the world. Until, you guessed it, the months started to fall out of alignment again. You see, the astronomer was close, but not exact. The year is 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds long. And while this is a small difference, it makes a huge impact over the centuries. This was fixed by the Catholic Church, and more specifically, Pope Gregory VIII. The Pope was upset that the religious holidays weren't actually falling on the day that they happened, so he got an astronomer to figure out exactly how far off the calendar was and how they could fix it. He determined the calendar was 11 days off and came up with an ingenious solution to modify the calendar. Years that ended with two zeros would not have a leap year unless they were divisible by 400. This eliminated three leap years for every four centuries, and the calendar was named the Gregorian calendar after the Pope. The Pope then announced the date after October 4th and 1582 would be October 15th. This got rid of the 10 days that were lost. Interesting fact, the United States didn't adopt the Gregorian calendar for a few hundred extra years since it wasn't a Catholic country. And because of this, many people including George Washington have two different birthdays. He was born February 11th according to the Julian calendar but February 22nd according to the Gregorian calendar. When the calendar was adopted, most people just started celebrating their birthdays 11 days later. The Gregorian calendar is the calendar that we use today in most of the world. However, some countries do use a different calendar, such as Saudi Arabia which uses only an Islamic calendar, and there are also other calendars that went extinct, such as the Mayan calendar. I tried to fit in the history of these calendars as well, but the script quickly got too long and hard to follow, so I chose to stuck with the calendar that most of the world uses. Thank you guys for watching, please like and comment, and if you enjoyed the video enough, consider subscribing. I make new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and I hate for you to miss out on new content. And as always, please enjoy the rest of your internet going experience.